It's good, amen. I'm not going to tell you before you long, but it's turning the Bibles to the book of Numbers. I'm going to be bouncing around in the scriptures, and I'm going to try to marry these texts together. But I believe that it's relevant. I believe that it is a word from the Lord. I believe that he wants to do something, considering not say amen. Numbers, the 14th chapter. I'm going to be reading the second and the third verse. When you have it, put your finger there. Then we're going to run, run over to Romans, the 12th chapter, the first verse. Put your finger there. Then we're going to go to Ephesians. We're going to get our Bible reading today. Amen. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and the 12th verse. Let us stand for the reading of God's word at this time. Starting at the 14th verse, I mean the 14th chapter of Numbers, the second verse, the third. And this is the children of Israel. We all know the story. They were in the wilderness for 40 years. Uh, and this is talking about them trying to enter into the Canaan land. Listen to this. It says, And all the children of Israel complained, somebody say complained, against Mike and Ray, I mean against Moses and Aaron. <laughs> My God, there's a lot, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. Let's try that one more time. And all the children of Israel complained, somebody say complained, complained, against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness. Somebody say the wilderness. Say it like I said, say the wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword? that our wives and our children should become victims. Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Somebody say Egypt. Yeah. So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Romans, the 12th verse, the 12th chapter, I'm sorry. God, excuse me, I'm turning in my Bible. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Somebody say a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed, somebody say conformed, to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Somebody say it's your mind. It's your mind. That you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and starting at the 20th verse, it reads as thus, But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off, somebody say put it off, concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Somebody say it's your mind. It's your mind. And that you put on, now we've got to put on the new man that was created according to God in true righteousness and in holiness. My God. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Lord God, I pray that I preach a word today to the encourage, the discourage, bring the sinner to full repentance and a backslider back on home and we'll be able so careful to give your name the glory in Jesus' holy name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I changed my mind. Look to your other neighbor and say, I changed my mind. One more person say, I changed my mind. My God, changed my mind. I want to speak from a subject, the power of a changed mind. The power of a changed mind. The children of Israel was in the wilderness for 40 years, but it really was only an 11-day journey. 
What in the world happened to the children of Israel? They were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. My God, what happened? Was it because of their enemies? Was it their circumstances? Was it their trials? Was it their tribulations? Or was it their hardship that they experienced while they were in the wilderness? What in the world happened to the children of Israel? I thought begin to interrogate the text and investigate it and try to rip apart the scriptures. I found out that it, the reason that the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness not for 10 years, not for 20 years or 30 years, but for 40 years because I found out that they had a wilderness mindset. A wilderness mindset. I know you're looking at me and say, how in the world, Pastor, can, can they have a, a, a wilderness mindset? How could that keep them in the wilderness for 40 years? My God, I'm telling you that your mind is powerful. Uh, you sure change yourself and you underestimate what you're capable of because you really don't know any better. But God has created us with some powerful minds. My God, I'm, uh, how can they be in the wilderness for 40 years? And you know my testimony. I tell it all the time. But um, uh, now we're up in age, Pastor Mike Young. And we're, we're not the same spring chickens that we used to be. But I see some of my friends now. They're, they're still clubbing it. They're still going to Macy's. And they're still doing these things before the club to get dressed like we used to do when we were 17. And they're buying gear. And they're trying to entice the ladies at the club. And they're squirting their perfumes on. And they're getting their alcohol. This is what we used to do. And, and see, Peach is not here, so I can tell the story. And I used to spray the perfume. And they're doing all this. And they drink. And they drink. They do all this, they party all night, and they're 40 years old, still doing the same thing that we did when we were 17 years old. It speaks to a mindset. The mind is a powerful, powerful thing. My God, I was talking to one of my friends, and he said, man, i got to stop going to the club because now my, my daughter's friends are there, and my, my nieces is there. And I found myself talking to one, and I said, my God, this is sick. It's all because of a mindset, my God. Uh, uh, I was reading an article the other day and it intrigued me, and some people that's in the medical field, they probably know uh, this terminology. I don't know where my the doctor is, he's right here, you probably know uh, this terminology, or somebody that's in the medical field, the placebo effect. The placebo effect, it was intriguing to me, and I have an article here, and I'll read just a little bit of it, I don't wanna bore you, uh, so you go to sleep, but it reads as thus, it says, a placebo is a medical treatment or a procedure designed to deceive the participant of a clinical experiment. It does not contain any active ingredients, but often still produce a physical effect on the individual. It says the placebo effect has been measured in thousands of medical experiences and many doctors admit to regular prescribing placebo. Drug companies must show that their new drugs work better than the placebo before the drugs are approved. My God, in other words, the doctor takes their clients and their client is sick uh, and they have symptoms and he looks at a pill and this pill really has sugar in it. It has no ingredients, it has no, no, no drugs in it, it's just sugar. But they're pretending that it's something uh, from the medical field. It's pretending to be a, a medicine. And he says to them, after you take this pill, you're going to be healed you're going to eventually be cured, all the symptoms will be gone, and you're going to feel much better. And they take the pill thinking that it's medicine. And all of a sudden, research has shown that thousands of people say they feel good. Thousands of people say, you know what, this works. But all of the time, this was just a sugar pill. It couldn't help them or it couldn't hurt them. But that just goes to show you that the power of the mind is about the pill, but it is the belief in the pill in which it will heal them. The mind is something powerful. They did another research, and they did a research where the people where they were in excruciating pain. It was two groups of people, and the doctor, they, they, they administered morphine through their IV, and they didn't even know that they uh, administered morphine through their IV. And this group of people that didn't know, uh, they, they, they said they still complained about pain. 
And then another group of people, the doctor came to their bedside and said, we're going to administer this morphine. And then you, you're going to take this and right away the pain shall leave. And sure enough, when they interviewed both groups, my God, this group of people said the pain left immediately. And this group of people said they were still complaining because they felt pain. They got the same dose of medication, the same dose of uh, morphine, but yet different results. And it was all because of the mind. The mind is a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing. When you begin to look at the scriptures, you'll see many scriptures. I found 39. I didn't count it all, but I stopped at 39 because it was getting tiring and boring. And, and all these 39 scriptures talk about the mind. The Bible says it is with the mind that we serve Christ. He didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of peace, joy, and what? A sound mind. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. As a man thinketh, so is he. All things are possible to him that believeth. My God, it's something extraordinary about the mind. So you can tell that it was something about this wilderness mindset that kept the kids of Israel in the wilderness for 40 years. My God, they had a wilderness my God, a mindset. What in the world happened to them? They, they, they were in bondage for 400 years. And now God raises up Moses and he raises up Aaron to deliver them into the promised land. Look at this. Look at this. This is the mindset of the people that God is trying to deliver. It says in the 14th verse, and we read it earlier, and all of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land to die? My God, this is the mindset of somebody that's being delivered from bondage. See, they were stuck in the present, and they kept looking at their past. They said, we should have died in the wilderness because they were faced with trials and tribulations, and then they wanted to go back to something that was familiar. They wanted to go back to Egypt and go into bondage and slavery all because they had a wilderness mindset. My God, I wonder how many of us is dealing with my God wilderness mindsets. Can I just be honest with you today? Uh, I just want to be transparent because I know you all holy. I know you all didn't struggle with the mindset that I struggle with. But the Bible says that any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. But it's up to us to put on the old man or put off the old man and put on the new man. So I remember when I was saved. I remember when I got saved, and you all know the story, we talk about it all the time, but I got saved and I was happy, I was on fire, and I was telling everybody, Jesus is real, I'm telling you, they ain't doing this, and they ain't doing that, and I was just on fire, I was seeing fruit, people were getting saved all over the place, my God, but then my fire died out, and I, I was embarrassed, because I didn't have my fire anymore, but the truth be told, my friends wasn't calling me like they used to. I wasn't the life of the party like I used to. And, 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 and you know, I said to myself, my God, I need to go back. Just like the children of Israel, I wanted to go back to Egypt. My God, I wanted to go back. I had a mindset of the wilderness. My God, I was wandering. My God, and I went back, and I went back, and I stayed, and some things happened. I remember an incident where I went to the club, and everybody was shocked to see me because I was preaching Jesus, and I was doing all these different things, and they're looking at me like, what in the world are you doing here? Here. My God, and I remember because I wanted to fit back in, but I didn't fit in, and I grabbed the drink. I said, man, shut up. Give me this drink. And I was trying to drown out my convictions, drown out everything that I was doing. My God, and I began to see somebody over there, and I was cussing at them. I was fussing, and they kept saying, I you in church, this and that, and I was cursing, and I was doing all of these different things. And I got so drunk that I began to talk mess to a group of men, and they jumped me. Pastor Mike, you remember this? I was in a club in Cleveland and they jumped me. My God, all because I wanted to go back to Egypt. But how many of you know that God has called you out of the world for a purpose? My God, you got a call on your life. My God, you got a word to live for the things of God. My God, I had a wilderness mindset.
mindset. My God, they were complaining, they were griping. You can't let your past cancel out your future. So many times we look at our past and we start missing the things that we did. But my God, God is calling us to the future. How many of you know that the Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish? Where there is no vision, the people perish. They couldn't see their future. They didn't have any vision because they were stuck in their past and they were stuck in their present. My God, how many times you go through life and things are not like we want it to be? Our money is not like we want it to be. We don't have the job that we want and our circumstances looking kind of crazy in front of us. So then we start looking at other ways and we start getting discouraged and depressed. Just like the children of Israel, they were looking at their circumstances, but it was causing them to want to go back to Egypt. My God. Look at somebody and tell somebody, you got to change your mind. You got to change your mind. The mind is a powerful, powerful thing. We got to change our mind. The Bible says in, in the New Living Translation, look at this. It says, uh, I know the first thing it says that don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. But the New uh, Living Translation says, don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God and will free you which the good and pleasing, perfect will of God will be. Change the way you think. My God. See, we're in Christ Jesus and we want to, you know, go uh, on this side of the fence, we want to live on this side of the fence, but God is calling us to live a certain way. And I know everybody don't like to hear these type of messages because it challenges us to change our mind. And I'm so glad that I changed my mind. I'm so glad that I gave my life to Christ and I changed my mind. See, the Bible says that the first thing that Jesus taught when he came on earth, he said, repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. That word repent means to turn away and it means to change your mind. And basically he was saying change your mind because the kingdom of God is at hand. We gotta learn to change our mind. And it's hard for us to look at the children of Israel and not take a look at ourselves. Because what we have to understand when you read the New Testament, the Old Testament, it points to the New Testament. My God, they were the first type and shadow of the church. They were the ecclesia. All that means is they were drawn out of Egypt like we were drawn out of the world. My God, and they had to change their mind. Even though God drew them out, they still were struggling with certain mindsets. Like we do today, but I'm trying to tell you, if you get it in your spirit and if you begin to change your mind, you can change your life, you can change your circumstances, you can change your job. If you want your life to change, you got to change your mind. Your mind is powerful. God constantly told us about the mind. It is impossible to please God, my God, without faith. Anything is possible to him that believeth, my God. Israel didn't even receive the promise. The older generation couldn't receive the promise because of their mindset. The mindset is so important, my God. So when you begin to look at this particular text and you begin to look at all that Israel went through, you got to read it. God was feeding the manna on high. And even though he was feeding the manna, they still was complaining. And they said this bread is worthless. My God, if I could believe that he was bringing them out of bondage, he was feeding them. He raised up leaders. My God, and they still was murmuring. They still was complaining against Moses and against Aaron because they had wilderness experience. My God, I wonder, I wonder in here today who's complaining about things that God has delivered you from, that has blessed you. You ain't got the right job, but you got a job. 
to go astray and not believe the word of God and not believe what God is saying about us. If I went up to you and I told you, my God, you were going to give counsel to the, uh, the kings and, and, and presidents and you're going to do all these amazing things, you would laugh. You wouldn't even believe what I was saying about your life because the mindset. And many times we got to divorce our tradition and our culture and our, uh, our environments because they limit us. My God, in the moment you try to stop in the valley, Jesus, that you 
put off, remember that? Put off concerning your form of conduct. The old man, which grows corrupt according to the lust of the flesh. It says we gotta put off. Yes, I know you've been born again. I know that you are a new creature. I know these things. I know that God has blessed you. You received God and you got filled with the Holy Ghost. But see, if this is something that we have to do on our part. He said, you got to put off the old man. It's up to you to put it off. Yeah, I know you used to go to the I know you used to fornicate. I know you used to doing these things. But God is telling us that we got to put off the old man. I know you don't like this type of preacher, but my God, I wouldn't be doing my job if I wouldn't challenge you to change your mind. Good God Almighty. He said, put it off. You got to put off that old man. See, the old man, he wants to stop you. He wants to limit you. My God, he don't want you to do the things that you are meant to do. God calls you to be an eagle, but you want to be stuck down here with the pigeons. My God, no, no, no. That's not what God has for you. You got to put off the old man. Ah, oh, my God. Can I talk to somebody just for today? You care if I be transparent? Pastor, now, now we was both saved in college and, and we were saved, we were on fire, we were reading, but we were young in our faith. We was just on fire. And Pastor Mike, he 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 told us that we're going to Detroit. And all of my buddies they weren't saved. And I told Pastor Mike, I'm not going. Because see, I got this newfound revelation that God has called me. But Pastor Mike was kind of wavering in his faith. I'm sorry to tell you this. He was wavering in his faith. My uh, God, he didn't really put off that old man yet. But he was saved. He was sanctified. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. But yet he still struggled with that old man. Uh, he thought I didn't know, but he said, I'm just going to go down with him. I'm not going to do anything. Uh, I stayed on the door and said, you go. You go ahead, Moses. I'm just going to stay here. My God. He went down there to the clubs. And he, he did what he did. And he came back. And I can tell he did something because he was humble before my presence. He was very humble before my presence. I, I sat in the door room like I was Moses. And I said, come on in, sir. <laughs> he came in and he wouldn't give me eye contact. He said, what's up? What you been up to? I said, you've sinned, haven't you? <laughs> he came in and he told me, he said, man, I got down there in Detroit. And they were drinking and, and I, I resisted for a little while. And then, you know, people were coming up to me and they were offering me drinks because we played for the Akron University. We was there with the white. He went to the NFL and I was just overtaken and I began to take a drink. And I said, my God, we've witnessed to all these people. And here you are, my God entangling yourself with the things that God delivered us from. But see, he was struggling with putting off the old man. Listen to this. Listen to this. Ephesians, my God, I'm going to read further. It says, put off the old man concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. My God, and when you renew the spirit of the mind, it says that you put on. Now you got to put on the new man which was created according to God is true righteousness and holiness. My God, see, when we get saved, yes, we've been programmed for years. We've been used to doing things. I'm telling you, I can just go back right now in the world, and I'm telling you, I'll get back to who I was just like that. My God, I'm not going to give you that testimony because I did that too. But now, I, I've learned that we have to take off that old man because the old man means us no good. It's trying to limit us. It's trying to take us back to Egypt. It's trying to keep us in the wilderness mindset. But the Lord is telling us to put on this new man because I have a plan and a call for your life. You have to change your mind because when you are limited, I gave you no limit. I have anointed you. I have appointed you. I know the thoughts that I have told you. Thoughts are not to harm you but to give you an expected end. God has a plan and a call for our lives. But I'm telling you, saints of God and beloved, just like the children of Israel, we got to work on our minds. He said, don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Change your mind. I know he's good looking. I know he got a sexy voice on the phone. I know he talked to you about sweet nothings. And I know it's hard, but my God tell him when you talk to him, I know I was going to come over at night. I know I said I was going to do this, but you know what? My mind, oh my God, when I change my mind, I begin to see things clearly. I begin to walk in the spirit. I begin to do like David did. I begin to praise the Lord. I begin to see things. I begin to pray for folks that begin to get healed. I begin to preach the gospel. People begin to get saved. All because I changed 
Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Hallelujah. Somebody in here needs to change their minds. My God, God's got something to pray for you. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, when I was reading this text, I said, this is for somebody. It might not be for the masses, but I'm telling you, I don't know who needs to change their mind, but it's for somebody. I'm telling you, it's decision time. You need to change your mind, your outlook, because the truth be told, this is where the battle is. My God, we got bodies, but it's your mind. My God, we got saved with people. They were witnessing with us. They was on fire. But my God, they ain't even serving the same God as we serve anymore. They don't even believe like we believe anymore. All because something happened to their mind. Good God Almighty. I wish I could talk to him again and say, brother, you need to change your mind. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Who in here today, it don't mean you're backslidden. It don't mean that you know you don't love God. But it's some things that you've been struggling with, some decisions you already wanted to make. This message is just a confirmation that you need to change your mind. My God, I'm telling you, I call this type of message grace because if you hear and you hear my voice and you heard this message, it was for somebody today. You need to change your mind. We always look at repent like it's a bad word. All he says, just change your mind. But repent sound like a cuss word to people. Repent! Jesus said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. I said, change your mind. You can't go on like you was going on. You can't think like you used to think. This is a whole new thing. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom. <laughs> you can't go on and say, God is speaking to you. He's dealing with you. My God is doing a lot of good things. You can't put new wine in old wine skins. He said, you got to change your mind. Be renewed in your mind. He kept saying, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a peace, joy, and a sound mind. All things are possible to him that believe you. They was believing in a sugar pill. And because they gave them the sugar pill, they said, but I feel good. But it really was the power of their mind. What can you do? Somebody here tell me I'll be a billionaire in 10 years. I won't doubt it. Because it's all in your mind. You can have a good mindset or a bad mindset. If I told you that, go over there for 11, it takes 11 days, and you took 40 years I said, there's something wrong with your mind. That's why I said you got to put on the helmet. 